take one gas plant, millions of litres of paint, some careful interior design, and ensure it all lasts for decades. It's revolutionary, pushing the boundaries of innovation. Destined for fields previously thought too challenging, Shell is shrinking a liquefied natural gas plant by four times its normal size and squeezing it onto a floating hull. At half a kilometre long, Prelude is one of the largest structures man has ever sent to sea. Prelude's gas plant is being built in a jigsaw of huge pieces, or modules, on the quayside. It's Hugh Jones's job to ensure that its construction runs smoothly. Looks a little bit like a forest of yellow steel right now, but we will bring it all together and form 14 modules. We'll join those 14 modules to themselves and to the hull to make a facility that is enormous, basically. A trip to Prelude's main deck already requires an elevator, but once complete, the floating gas plant will be 30 storeys high. I'm going to put my forest of modules on top and it will look absolutely fantastic. Most ocean-going vessels return to dry dock for maintenance every five years. But Prelude is designed not to return for 25. To survive, every inch must be utterly protected. It's Steve Bell's job to make sure Prelude's 260,000 tonnes of steel are painted to perfection. Painting is a lot more technical than what people will actually think. Different paints react different temperatures, and it is a very technical discipline. Steve and his team are here to inspect the paint job on a new piece of the gas plant. Any defect in the paint would, in the long term, bring an early breakdown of the coating system, which would cause an early failure of the steelwork. It has to be perfect. But on this occasion, Steve's team spot some imperfections. There was a few areas where the, uh, the final coat was missing and there was a few areas where it was a little bit high. That's the main purpose of these inspections, is to find these items and basically work with the shipyard to rectify the items as quick as possible. Across the shipyard, naval architect Brian Casey faces an entirely different challenge to design living quarters that far exceed expectations. I've designed quite a few accommodations on vessels, and they're all fairly basic, so we, we thought, well, we're prelude, and let's try and do something that's good. The whole living quarter has got glazed panel walls, huge open spaces, quiet lounges. It's like a Hilton hotel. I wouldn't mind staying there for a few weeks. Prelude will have around 120 people on board, each with their own cabin. But at busy times, additional people will have to share, requiring sofa beds. We need to have everything the same. So if someone's coming in, it's a two-man cabin, his sleeping arrangements have to be the same. But making the sofa bed as wide as the main bed means a design compromise for Brian. I'd have rather have kept a slightly narrow mattress by 30 millimetres, just over an inch, but um, it would cause major problems offshore. You know, people would say, your bed's wider than mine, even if it's only an inch. But the design is uh, very nice. It is, yeah. Um, we made the best of it, you know. It's just that I had it perfect initially. Try, yeah. Brian will never live on Prelude, so to inspect the very first completed cabin, he's joined by someone who will. Production coordinator, Frank Groen. We're going up to the 59th floor. <laughs> the elevator only reaches the main deck. 
perched on the stern, the living quarters is another nine storeys high. The finished cabin is right at the summit. Brian and Frank have to hike. We've waited a long time for this. It's probably one of the bigger cabins that I've seen for a facility, certainly an offshore facility, so yeah, it's pretty impressive. Additional drawers. Which quite good. And all these cupboards are all soft closing, so, you know. We also have hidden curtains. We've seen a bit of privacy is, is always important, but it's good. It's More shelves. Yeah. More shelf space. Originally you had tie racks in there, Brian. That's right, yeah. yeah. A tie rack. Tie rack. We got rid of that. Now we go to the, uh, the bathroom. This was moved a few times. Do you remember the, do you remember the discussion on that, Brian? Yeah. yeah. It was a major item, the, the clothesline. Yeah. That what moved around about three or four different times. It's attention to detail that makes life a lot better offshore, yeah? Frank's impressed so far, but will the sofa bed be up to scratch? Okay. That's right. That's okay. quite a good setup. Yeah. As you can see, it looks very, very close or very similar to the fixed bed when it's down. And that was the main design criteria we had. And they're both the same widths, yeah? Do you want to try this one? You'll be sleeping under Frank. Yeah, yeah. Ah. And the full length's there too, which is good, because quite often you can't get that, that extra length. It's very good. These are great. Obviously, Australians are usually taller as well. That was one of the key points of... I didn't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Although there's a lot yet to achieve, the Prelude team is well on its way to building a world-class, technically innovative facility that will stand the test of time. You come back here in three months' time and it's going to be a huge change here and taller. Fantastic, I got goose pimples talking about it. <laughs> <laughs>